So uh, could you just like briefly introduce yourself and like to, like quickly recap like what your position is in Kingan? Oh, of course. So my name is Jay Mello. Uh, I am the town engineer. Um, so I work uh, for the DPW uh, design, uh, on improvements and uh, to the town's infrastructure. Typical things that the DPW does, we, I guess we can go there, we'll go kind of umbrella inward, right? So the, the Department of Public Works takes care of all of the public infrastructure in town. So roads, sidewalks, your water line, your sewer line, um, and things like that, uh, public buildings. So um, the maintenance of those improvements, installation of new things, those all fall under our guys. Uh, specifically what I do is uh, take care of the engineering aspects of those things. Uh, as well as provide engineering guidance to other departments in town. Um, so for example, um, uh, one project that I've worked on lately is a redesign of an intersection. So the intersection, um, excuse me, currently doesn't have um, great traffic patterns. Um, people can move in and out of it rather quickly. Um, and uh, it also isn't very safe. The, it could, uh, the design of it could result in a large number of crashes. So uh, what we did was took some plans and uh, using engineering standards for vehicles, figured out what we could do with the intersection to make it safer. Um, what led you to your position in the DPW? So I am one of the few people who knew uh, what he wanted to do from the point that I was very, very little and then pretty much have just kind of followed that uh, my entire life. So. I wanted to be an engineer since I was a little kid. Um, one of my friend's fathers was a civil engineer and I thought it was the coolest thing ever that he had a minivan with a desk in it. So that's that's pretty nerdy, but it was it was cool because he would talk about all these problems he was solving at work and how you know we could go and drive over the bridge that he was building. And I thought that was very cool that you could build something so tangible and meaningful that impacted uh, so much of society. So that's kind of, why I went with it. Yeah, so you yeah. mentioned um, like in early childhood, you had like a strong interest for like engineering and like STEAM, right? Yes, oh yeah, exactly. So I was fortunate that the school system that I grew up in um, had an independent study program and we were in uh, elementary school. So I was in, able to engage in a number of just, you know, learning about rockets and here's how like the moon orbits the earth and here's how satellites work. And I was able to engage in that as study uh, further outside of what we learn in the classroom. And then uh, let's see, by the time junior high rolled around, I'm not sure if this is a thing anymore. I would hope so, but is the science Olympiad still a thing? Do they, they still do that? Yeah, so I was, a, we did three years of science Olympiad um, in junior high school. And then, you know, when high school rolls around, I, you know, I just kind of kept taking um, science engineering classes. Um, as an engineer and someone who's clearly passionate about engineering, what is the most exciting thing about your job? So I like being able to drive around with my family and friends and be like, ooh, I built this. Ooh, I built that. Oh, you can see that on Google Earth now. Ooh, 10,000 cars a day take this road and I improved it so they'll all be safer. So those kind of things are really cool as a civil engineer. That's the, um, that's what I really enjoy about it is, I, I mean, engineers in general often have an impact on in great numbers of people's lives, anywhere from a mechanical engineer designing airplane parts to, you know, electrical engineers designing things for the grid or components for a consumer product. So that's the nature of engineering in general. But oftentimes, uh, unless you're a civil engineer, um, especially in something like public works where your projects are really kind of concentrated in one area, it's very difficult to see or like tangibly engage in the the product of what you do. But for civil engineers, we can do that all the time. I can take a walk on a sidewalk that I designed and managed the construction of. I can, I you know, drive down the roads that we redesigned. Um, one of the first things I did when I was an intern, which is you now a very long time ago with the highway department was built, uh, I was part of the team that uh, tore down and built an overpass over an interstate highway. And that wasn't, you know, in the terms of the life of an uh, over and a human, it was, it felt like a long time ago, but in terms of life, of the overpass, it really hasn't been a long time. So obviously I can still drive over that bridge and under it and everything else. And that's really cool to be like, man, I remember that. Like, I remember putting this here. So that's, that's one of the things that's coolest about civil engineering.
Yeah, so I think your rule, you do a lot of stuff that gives back to your community and like you can just see and it's just like bettering and improving it. So like those types of things, I think a lot of people, um, they pass by and they, they just think, oh, wow, it's a nice building. But like you probably think about it differently and think about like what went into it, right? <laughs> So I often annoy uh, my wife when I'm like, hey, look at that curb over there. That curb, it just goes off and then it, what's it doing around that catch base? And she's like, we're on vacation. We don't need to be talking about curb lines. So we definitely have a different opinion of things. So I know you touched on this earlier, how like um, the stormwater is like a definitely a big issue because of climate change. Are there mm -hmm. any other like a lot of, um, town issues you're seeing now i'm I, this isn't specific to canton i think this is across the board um at least in the northeast a lot of our infrastructure is just aging out um a lot of it was built you know between the 50s and the 70s uh so and you know the major infrastructure not you know uh residential development which is much more 80s 90s 2000s um, and that infrastructure is getting old. So one of the common refrains you hear um, um, when it comes from the mass department of transportation is how old the bridges are. Like a lot of our bridges in the state are getting very old beyond what's considered their serviceable life and they need to be replaced. And, um, you know, I think that's probably one of the biggest things I see as an industry. So I, you know, I guess is, uh, it would be great to see on a national level uh, a, a large scale investment in our infrastructure just to, to modernize it and kind of bring it into the 21st century. So like to remodernize and like to start up these projects, uh, what type of, like, or I guess I should say, like what type of um, other people would you work with or collaborate with to achieve these type of things? So, um, as a civil engineer, you work with like a, a ton of different types of, of people. So on the town level, if it's a project that um, involves maybe long-term planning the town has done or, or seeking a grant or something of the like, we'll work with the planning department and the town planner. If there's an issue that comes up involving, um, you know, wetlands or a resource area like that, we work with the conservation department. Um, engineering is just an, a, a division within the DPW. So we're often working very closely with, you know, the water department and the highway department to accomplish uh, goals at that level. Um, uh, and we can do really anything that uh, anyone would need like planning or construction management help with, or I mean, even something simple like, um, you know, hey, we've got to set up a temporary parking lot to do this or that. Hey, can you guys give us a hand? So if the recreation department needed a hand something like that, you know, we could really do anything for anyone. Um, I know you just talked about using a lot of math um, for engineering, but are there other aspects of STEAM that you use as an engineer or specifically a civil engineer? Uh, we do a fair amount of uh, biology and chemistry, believe it or not. So um, one of the efforts the town is engaging in at the moment is um, inspection of all of our drainage outfalls. And then if they are um flowing uh during a non weather event sampling the flow from them to determine um if it's groundwater or not and you know what that constitutes so that's um falls into the environmental of things and that's chemistry so the way you take a sample is very important and the way um that gets to the lab and there's a whole process involved with that that having a base level of uh, biology and chemistry is very important for um and you know i think technology just applies to every type of engineering you know things change even though civil engineering is a very old profession a lot of things will continue to be the same way they are for the rest of time because things are standard and will and will never change but um you know plenty of other things do there's new technologies all the time so uh, for example with traffic um one of the big things uh coming around now uh, with crosswalks is the uh blinking uh solar powered lights um, which, uh, obviously, uh, putting them in is fairly simple, but, uh, figuring out exactly where to put them in. So, uh, what warrants putting one up or not, um, is a whole other story. Uh, so, 
you kind of have to keep up with the technology there uh, because if you don't, you're going to end up with these things all over the place, which might not be the best, the best call. And that's just, you know, one example. What impact do you think Steam has had on you? Uh, it, you know, probably the easily uh, pointed to is the reason I became an engineer. Um, so I don't think without being exposed to uh, things like uh, engineering and technology and, 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 you know, being pushed to do my math homework, even if I didn't want to, and things like that, I would uh, be where I am now. Um, so I think it's important um, that, you know, when people are growing up, they're exposed to it. Um, I think it's often, uh, it can be intimidating and I don't think that's necessarily, uh, I don't think that's the case at all. I think, you know, science, technology, mathematics, engineering, all and the like are very, um, very approachable and, and, and cool to be quite frank. It's, it's very cool um, and they're very creative. Um, fields to be in. Uh, you know, being creative isn't necessarily um, drawing or or playing music or anything, you know, and, and I, I'm a musician and I, I really enjoy using uh, music to express myself, but it's also pretty cool that um, when you think about it, engineering, science, technology, those are all thing uh, areas that you're creating something with and you, you can really if you think about it, kind of express your opinion through that. So, um, hey, I really think this intersection needs to be a lot slower and here's the way to do it. Also, this is gonna look really pretty and make, you know, make for low maintenance. And if that's your design ethos, those things will show through is like, oh, wow, hey, that's really aesthetically pleasing. And we don't really have to spend a lot of extra time cleaning up after snowstorms over here. That's really great. So, um, you know, it's not necessarily writing a rock album, right? But it's still doing something that's creative because you're solving open-ended problems. There's n in many things in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, there's no one answer or one way to get there. There's often many possible solutions and many, many ways to get there. Um, so that, that promotes creativity.